Are you ready to uncover the dark secrets behind nursery rhymes? You may have sung Seesaw Marjorie Daw countless times while teetering on a seesaw in your childhood, but its haunting origins and sordid secrets might just surprise you. Join me on a journey as we delve into the intricate tapestry of enchantment and hardship, unveiling the concealed history of Seesaw Marjorie Daw. Welcome back, my fellow Darklings. Before we embark on unravelling its origins, let's first reacquaint ourselves with the curious verses of this rhyme. Seesaw, Marjorie Daw, Johnny shall have a new master. He shall have but a penny a day, because he can't work any faster. Johnny is also often interchanged with the name Jackie. First published in 1765, the original rendition of the rhyme starkly differs from our modern counterpart, yet both versions harbour troubling connotations. Although commonly interpreted as a mocking taunt intertwined with narratives of poverty and cruelty, the initial rendition of the rhyme lacks the familiar verses, centering instead on the strange character of Marjorie Daw. Seesaw Marjorie Daw, sold her bed and lay upon straw, sold her bed and lay upon hay, and Pisky came and carried her away, for wasn't she a dirty slut, to sell her bed and lie in the dirt? This rhyme also appears in various shortened versions and is thought to originate from Scotland. Its initial publication in Glasgow and the inclusion of the term Daw, which denotes a sluggard or idle woman in Scottish dialect, lend support to this notion. Although historical records fail to confirm the existence of a real-life Marjorie Daw, she holds prominence in Cornwall, serving as a mystical landmark and central figure in a strange local ritual. Cornwall, a unique gem in England, is famed for its picturesque beaches and surfing havens, yet beneath its surface lies a rich tapestry of magic and mysticism. On the southern slope of Carn Mar, near Penance, lies an ancient well, known locally as Figgy Dowdy's Well or Marjorie Daw's Well. Sometimes these names intertwine to form Madge Figgy's Well. For generations, a cherished tradition on Good Friday involved local children bringing their dolls to be christened in the waters here. Known as Dolly Dunking, this practice faded away around the 1960s, yet continues to this day at Fenton Bebabel in Cornwall. Just when and why this odd custom started is unknown, with locals unsure about the true identities of Figgy Dowdy and Marjorie Daw, although some believe she may have been an early local saint. In the early 20th century, a local historian speculated that the names might stem from ancient Cornish, a Brythonic Celtic language that still persists in the area today. For example, the term figgy, familiar as figgy pudding from the carol We Wish You a Merry Christmas, originates from Cornish. Though now referring to raisins, historically it denoted fruit more broadly. The names appear to stem from ancient Cornish words for reap or reaper, good or goddess, and harvest or scythe. This etymology suggests that Marjorie Daw could signify the good reaper or the reaper goddess, while Madge Figgy might imply the harvest scythe or the fruitful harvest, and Figgy Dowdy could mean the good goddess of the scythe or the good goddess of the fruit. So despite these names appearing very different, they are actually one and the same and seem to represent the remnants of a Cornish harvest and fertility goddess. Critics have raised doubts about this theory, pointing out that Cornish is a rich and intricate language, with numerous other possible sources for the names. However, the surname Daw or Dawes was historically found exclusively in Ireland and Cornwall until the late 18th century, when it began spreading to other parts of Britain. Its origin appears to be an anglicised version of several Irish Gaelic names, believed to derive from words meaning God or Good, and Luck or Light, along with a title for a highly respected woman, akin to lady or queen. This evidence may lend credence to the notion that Marjorie Daw may indeed be a remnant of an ancient goddess. What's intriguing is how this theory creates a potential link between the old nursery rhyme and the Dolly Dunking tradition observed at Marjorie Daw's well. Corn dollies, crafted from straw, played a crucial role in pre-mechanisation harvest traditions across Europe. Before the spread of Christianity, Pagan beliefs held that the spirit of the corn dwelled within the crop, becoming homeless after the harvest. To honour this spirit, straw salvaged from the harvest was intricately woven or braided into figures known as corn dollies. These creations were ritually moistened with water, representing rain, and then kept in households until the following year. With the arrival of the new planting season, 
the corn dolly was ceremonially returned to the soil, signifying the restoration of the corn spirit and ensuring abundant crops. In certain areas, the corn dolly was placed in a bed before its return to the earth, symbolizing fertility. Could the tradition of dolly dunking at Marjorie Dawes Well be a remnant of the ancient custom of watering the corn dolly? And could the original nursery rhyme also hint at the corn dolly traditions, with mentions of straw, hay, and disposing of a bed to lie in the dirt? Without hard evidence, this is all just speculation, but it is a fascinating idea. The original rhyme also mentions piskies, referring to pixies. While Scotland has its own pixie folklore, where the pixies disdain human laziness, possibly explaining the reference to Marjorie Daw being carried away by them, Cornish pixie legends are equally rich. Surrounding Marjorie Daw's well are hills dotted with Iron Age structures, including fugus. These stone-lined sloping tunnels, sometimes extending up to 20 metres, continue to puzzle historians regarding their original purpose. Locally, they're called pisky halls or pisky houses. Moreover, the area is teeming with tales of travellers led astray by mysterious lights, false paths or eerie encounters, a phenomenon known as being pisky led by the Cornish, attributed to pixie mischief. These clues imply that the rhyme likely originated in Cornwall, but whether it remained unchanged when it travelled to Scotland or underwent alterations along the way remains uncertain. It's plausible that the Scottish understanding of the word door transformed Marjorie Daw into a slut, referring to an untidy or lazy woman. Historically, the word did not carry the sexual implications it does today. Robert Hunt offered an alternative interpretation in his 1881 book, Popular Romances of the West of England. He suggested that Marjorie Daw was likely a devout Catholic and proposed that the rhyme emerged from a Protestant perspective, depicting strong disapproval towards Roman Catholic women who led a humble, disciplined life. This viewpoint reinforces the idea that Marjorie Daw was a saint. Furthermore, Hunt associated the term seesaw with the image of an elderly woman rocking gently in her chair. Elsewhere in Cornish folklore, Maggie Figgy emerges as a formidable witch, her essence entwined with storms and shipwrecks. From her stone throne perched high upon the cliff's edge, she beckons forth spirits amidst storms, ensnaring ships in her web of doom, looting their wreckage with a sinister glee. But regardless of Marjorie Daw's initial persona, whether she was revered as a goddess, honoured as a saint, or feared as a witch, she transformed into a symbol representing poverty attributed to the moral failing of laziness. Which brings us to the version most commonly known today, where Johnny or Jackie acquires a new master and earns a mere penny a day. The prevailing theory regarding the origins of this rhyme suggests it served as a mocking taunt directed at impoverished children, implying that their mother was akin to Marjorie Daw and hinting that they were destined for the workhouse. Despite glittering tales of extravagance, a significant portion of the population of the Georgian era, up to two in five families, struggled to survive below the poverty line. The 18th century poor law aimed to offer vital assistance to the impoverished. Affluent households contributed through levies to their respective parishes, empowering local overseers to distribute financial aid, clothing and food to those in need. While the vast majority of 18th century relief recipients were genuinely in need through circumstances beyond their control, a prevailing belief persisted that poverty was a result of the moral failings of the poor, whether attributed to alcoholism, gambling or laziness, akin to the character of Marjorie Daw. In an attempt to address the escalating costs of parish relief, these outspoken voices advocated for the notion that seeking assistance should come with hardship, proposing to make charity less appealing and thereby discouraging its pursuit. In 1722, legislation allowed parishes to establish workhouses as a means of providing relief to the poor, a system that ultimately housed over 100,000 individuals by the century's close. These establishments, marked by strict regulations and mandatory labour, varied widely in quality, with some resembling prisons rather than places of refuge. Overcrowding was rampant, particularly in London workhouses accommodating hundreds, where inmates were forced to wear uniforms or badges denoting their demeaning status. Disease spread unchecked, unleashing devastating epidemics and alarming mortality rates. Social investigator Jonas Hanway's findings in 1750 revealed a shocking 90% death rate among workhouse children. Under the oversight of a master, 
inmates endured gruelling 12-hour workdays and subsisted on meagre rations, typically bread and butter for breakfast, broth or peas pudding for dinner, and occasionally bread and cheese for supper. While this theory may shed light on the concluding lines of the rhyme, the crux of the rhyme centres on the seesaw itself, a staple of playgrounds where countless generations have sung its verses while enjoying the ride. Surprisingly, however, the origin of the rhyme might not be as straightforward. The term seesaw could potentially allude to something entirely different, unrelated to children's rides or playground equipment. The term seesaw made its debut in print in 1638 in Richard Brome's play The Antipodes, where it referred not to a children's playground item, but to the rhythmic back-and-forth motion of sawyers operating a two-man saw. Given the prevalence of wooden implements and buildings, along with the shipbuilding industry's heavy reliance on sawn timber, sawyers played a vital role in various sectors. Working together, they would alternate pulling the two-man saw through the log, a slow and physically demanding process requiring considerable strength and stamina. Typically working full days six days a week, sawyers developed a reputation for drinking, partly due to the arduous and monotonous nature of their work. It's plausible, therefore, that the nursery rhyme See Saw Marjorie Daw emerged as a light-hearted chant sung by sawyers to keep rhythm and amuse themselves, possibly while indulging in alcohol. In this light, the verses about earning merely a penny a day due to their inability to work faster assume fresh significance, a humorous expression of discontent regarding their toilsome labour for meagre wages. But what do you think? Was Marjorie Daw a Cornish goddess, saint, or witch? And does the rest of the rhyme reference workhouses, or soaring wood? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if your thirst for nursery rhyme origins still lingers, don't forget to subscribe and explore the rest of my channel. See you in a future video.